DNU. Now, every election year in Kenya has seen the country almost come to a standstill as tensions rise and often lead to conflict and violence. Political competition during the electioneering period often escalates beyond vibrant debate on party policies and manifestos into ethnic polarization. Successive electoral bodies have been accused of aiding and abetting electoral malpractices and rigging with sections of politicians pushing for electoral reforms. Now, senior political affairs reporter Patrick Kamimo looks into the role of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, and should the BBI process culminate in a referendum? The Building Bridges Initiative for National Unity Advisory Task Force, commonly referred to as the 14-member BBI Task Force, was gazetted on 31st May 2018 after the famous handshake. After one and a half years collecting views from the public and institutions, the team said it had completed its report on 23rd October 2019. For a month, Kenyans have been waiting for the BBI report, with the divisions emerging as politicians speculate on its findings. An appointment to hand over the report to His Excellency the President has been arranged for Tuesday, 26 November 2019. The current IEBC is operating with only three commissioners, Chairman Wafula Chebukati and Commissioners Professor Abdi Gulie and Boya Molu. Commissioner Rosalina Kombe resigned almost a week before the October 26, 2017 repeat presidential poll. In April 2018, three commissioners, Connie Maina, Paul Kurgat and Margaret Machanya, resigned from the commission. The Chebukati-led team will be on the spot over political legitimacy and legal issues surrounding the electoral body's composition, given that some of the BBI recommendations might affect the governance structure and the 2022 political succession. Within the political arena, there are those also who will use this argument uh, to delegitimize uh, the IBC. Uh, th those who are anti-BBI, if I could, could, could put it that way, for example, could very quickly say, uh, you guys, we, we do not have the infrastructure, the IBC is not properly constituted. So as either to delegitimize process, the process itself or to delay it uh, to a future date where they can also try and resolve their own political uh, uh, questions. The National Assembly passed a bill sponsored by the William Chiptumo led Justice and Legal Affairs Committee that provides for the establishment of an 11-member permanent selection panel to oversee recruitment of commissioners and subsequent appointments whenever vacancies arise. The bill is now before the Senate for concurrence. Members in both houses are split, with some pushing for a complete overhaul of the electoral body. At the political leadership level, uh, it almost seems as if it's a tradition to wait until such a time when these issues become a crisis. Uh, then begin now to try and run with them in different formations. And, and to me, that is deliberate. Um, it's a way of sort of creating a bit of chaos and disorder. They are then forced to come to the table and, and do things almost outside the constitutional provisions. There is an apparent lethargy in clinging the IABC and its secretariat. The electoral body has often been subjected to piecemeal reforms every election year since the adoption of plural politics in 1990. Apart from the Cheptumo bill that is before the Senate, two other bills seeking to amend the IABC Act are way to be debated by members, even as the clock ticks to 2022. Our institutions, particularly the electoral institutions, will always have some level of weakness. Uh, uh, because these last, last minute uh, uh, you know, amendments to laws and, and coming up with new laws are never really meant to, to, to look at uh, a long-term perspective. They always seem to be uh, carefully designed to take care of immediate uh, uh, interest. Ethnic polarization and electoral violence still persists, with Chebukati and his team appearing helpless despite the commission enjoying deterring and punitive electoral code of conduct laws. If there are, there, there are you know, candidates who have been involved in violence in campaigns, for example, the law is very clear. The party is supposed to be suspended. Uh, uh, in that particular particular election. We know that uh, some of these are very dicey political issues. But then again, it goes back to the institution. If the country burns, if we have widespread violence the way we saw in 2007, really the first uh, institution to be blamed is the electoral institution. Patrick Amimo, KTA News.